Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the initial flight test for the new Sh Xiaomi, Xiaomi? <laughs> Femi X8 drone. We did an unboxing already on this, kind of an inspection setup and seeing how it looked on the screen initially in the house. If you did want to see that more in depth close up on the table, I'll have a card pop up here for that unboxing and also I'll have a link in the description. But today is all about the X8. Let's go ahead and run it through as many paces as we can. Now, I only have one battery that came with it. I couldn't get an extra battery. So this should be around 30 minutes of flight time. They claim maximum of 33 minutes. Bit windy right now so it'll be good to see how it is in some wind I don't even know if it's gonna rain or not we're having a storm coming tomorrow on Sunday and this is kind of like the pre storm I think so let's get started with the Femi X8 SE edition one thing I should mention some people have said that the SE edition which this is this is the first X8 that came out. There's no obstacle avoidance sensors. It's a little bit deceiving because you've got this little visor here. It looks like clear glass, but um, apparently it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance sensors whatsoever. It just has these bottom optical flow camera and sonic sensors to see the ground. So in the website, when I ordered this, there was one picture of location lock where they showed like the the uh, drone angle like this and they showed like a scanning of an object in front of it and that's why I thought that there was some kind of obstacle avoidance from this visor but apparently what that means is it's using the camera here the 4k camera and these bottom ground sensors to actually uh, help it lock its position along with the GPS is what that picture meant. So I apologize if I kind of uh, was wrong mentioning it did have obstacle avoidance in the front, but apparently another version, more of a pro version that comes out should have more obstacle avoidance. So anyway, just wanted to get that clear. First little con, which I didn't really mention in my unboxing was, it would have been nice if they had some sort of uh, cap for the gimbal camera. All they have is this high density piece of foam. Maybe they'll go ahead and engineer something and and future releases take care of that but for now there's a little bit of a con all you get is a foam to kind of uh, guard your your gimbal and camera not a big deal but it seemed a little bit unprofessional to me so anyway got a fully charged battery let's go ahead and open up these arms see how long it takes so you want bottom first then the top what I did notice is um, when the front arms come out there's not really a clip a click sound a little bit of one but not as much as the rear ones for some reason not sure why, but that's how it is. I have a super high speed uh, SD card in here. Let me pull this open. So there is a SanDisk Extreme 32 gig in there so we can get our 4K video. And I should mention it's a little bit tough to get out with your finger. So what I did is I printed one of these little memory card uh, removing tools and I'll kind of show you how that works. If you want to buy one or you have a 3D printer, it's kind of cool. It has tweezers on one end and there's a little push mechanism on the other. Since your finger can't really go in here uh, easily unless you have long fingernails, you see how one end has like this protruding little tab and then uh, you just grab it with the tweezers and you can pull that out pretty easily like that. See how that comes out. For the life of me, I cannot push that in because I don't have any fingernails. So you just take that uh, tab end of this tool and click it on in. And there you go, ready for action. Getting out the controller. One more little con guys is there's not really a uh, easy storable place for a little dongle you're gonna need. This is the USB-C dongle. Cable is just kind of floating around, not really any place to put it. You know how like DJI does, again, I'm comparing it to DJI. Sorry about that, but you know how they have like a nice slot for it where it kind of all collapses together. Would have been nice if they could have done something like that. So we're plugging it in so the cable is on the right side of your phone, on the bottom port, and the regular USB is hanging down. Sit that right in the slot there. Then all we do is kind of push it and get that whole thing nestled in there. I do have a little slimline case on there and it seems like it does well. Don't plug this one in yet until you get the drone on. So the first thing we're doing is we're making sure it's in this button to the left and we're pushing power and power again and holding. And then we're turning on the drone the same way. Make sure the gimbal's clear. Don't want any kind of grass to hit that while it's initializing. Power, power hold. There we go. 
So the gimbal clearance, as you can see, it's a little bit close. It was even kind of scraping the launch pad, so you might want to hold that down while it initiates. A little bit of a con, quite low. Maybe we could put some extended landing gear on it and print some out on a 3D printer. Okay, so it's bound up. You can see how the left power light went from red to white, but this is still red here. We can't take off yet. So what I'm gonna do in my phone settings is I'm having the Wi-Fi off. I'm just using my cell data, and I'm also turning Bluetooth off for the least amount of interference possible. And I wanna leave my cell phone data on just so I can pull in the real-time Google Maps. Since that's booted up, now what we can do is plug in this little plug on the bottom and as soon as you plug that in if you set your Android to auto launch the um, Femi app it's called the Femi Navi it will launch let me go ahead and start recording this so you can see what I'm talking about what I am noticing once I connected my phone and apparently it has enough satellites the takeoff button now turned uh, white so apparently maybe you can fly this just line of sight uh, without even using the FPV I'm not going to try that in this review, but maybe we'll try it in a different review. Let's go ahead and enter device, and hopefully, yep, there we go. So we have all our video you can see up on the screen there. I'll have that for you guys displayed. Uh, it's got 15 satellites right now. We've got a good map here that it pulled in. I'm here on Maui, Hawaii, and like I said, it's quite windy today, so we're going to see how this thing does in some wind. Um, so we'll just shoot right into the options and we will quickly go into compass calibration. You see that there? I did it already, but I just wanna do it again with you guys. Really simple, calibrate, rotate the drone clockwise on a level, in a level form like this. So we're just picking it up and rotating it. I kinda of wanna bring it away from the controller a bit and I'm just looking at the controller with my head and seeing when it tells me the next step. Okay, now it says face uh, face up and then go clockwise again so I've got that facing up going clockwise you can see on my hat cam looking at the screen until it tells me it's done check mark setting it back down and that's really it there's also some other calibration like the gimbal and the IMU you're gonna to want to do that in your house on like a perfectly level still surface restart drone to complete calibration all right, cool. So we don't want to fly it yet because it said to restart. So I'll go ahead and restart and we'll get this thing up in the air. So everything's auto, guys, so you know. Starting to record, also recording my phone. So I got the power light blinking here, indicating it's recording, and I also have something up on the top right indicating it's recording. So let's get this thing launched. We're already at 97%. Man, I always take so long, but we need to go through all this stuff so you guys know what's up. So all we should have to do is, is hold the launch button right here holding down saw how that started now the winds blowing at me so I want to be kind of careful and how high are we going initially okay so it's gonna hover there which seems like 13 feet and by the way guys you can you can choose between Imperial and metric which is awesome in these settings. I'm just gonna let it hover there for a second because it's supposed to have like a um, precise landing option. So that's how it's doing in this wind. It is going kind of up and down in the wind. Uh, I did test it at my house in no wind and it's pretty darn much more stable in no wind as you can imagine. Let's pull it down a little bit to like eye level right here. And the wind is blasting, you can probably hear it. I mean, it's like 10 to 15 coming from like that direction. And you can see how it kind of moved over because as soon as it launched, it kind of got blown this way. So, you know, that's okay. Hopefully maybe it'll return to home on there. So we're gonna look at it kind of close up. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching my vids. And I want to give you guys a close up view of it on the hat cam here. There it is, just hovering. That front looks so cool, man. I wish there were sensors in the front of the SE edition, but apparently not. Wind's kind of in between gusts right now. And you know what, I would categorize this as far as a noise level. I would say it's pretty much on par with like a Mavic Pro um, low noise props or a Mavic Pro 2 or a Mavic 2 Zoom. So not very loud at all. My hat cam mic is super sensitive so it might sound a little loud but it's really just as quiet as those guys. Okay, so we wanna start flying. We gotta hurry up because we've got 89% battery and let's do some 
flight testing, speed testing in normal mode. So this is all stock, no settings changed. Uh, full speed up. And I'm looking at my screen. Wow, the vertical speed isn't even working. You see it on the top left there? Horizontal speed says two miles per hour. So something they gotta fix. I don't even think that's right. It's going way faster than two miles per hour. Let's come on down. Let's tilt the camera all the way down. This is me controlling the gimbal. A little bit of glitching on the screen because it's directly above. There's a new skate park over there, which we're gonna film in a couple minutes. I'm gonna click on it to see if that'll... Okay, that adjusted the white balance. You see how it was all washed out? And I clicked on the skate park. Looks a little better now. I'm gonna pick it up back to the horizon. We go down just a little bit so we can get a little bit more of a ground picture. Okay, full stick down. This is how fast it's coming down. It only says 1.3, negative 1.3 on the horizontal speed. I would have thought the VS would have been vertical speed. So I don't know, but that's what it's saying. Anyways, bringing it down, we got 19 satellites. And let's see how fast it stops. Letting off right now. Okay, pretty on par. Couple of feet of fluctuation there, but it's just so windy right now. Seems like DJI might be a little bit more stable in the wind, but not by much. It does have more sensors on DJI. Anyway, forward speed, maximum. Is it gonna hit the ground if we turn? Nope. Okay, remember the Xeno hit the ground when I did that kind of turn. Wow, the camera looks really stable too. I'm gonna pitch that all the way up. Let's try that one more time and do a sharp left turn, which the Xeno crashed in. Full stick forward in normal mode. And sharp turn to the left. Okay, it's staying up, no crashing. <laughs> all right, so better than the Xeno. And let's get that letting off stopping power. Let's see how it is. Full stick forward, coming at me, letting off. Nice, smooth stop. Okay, it's gonna perform great in uh, just regular flying modes. Full roll to the right, into the wind. Okay, it dropped a little bit because the wind is blasting from that direction. Going with the wind and letting off. All right, doing fantastic. It's fluctuating a little bit, but it's not gonna be driven into the ground, it looks like. It does adjust. Cool. So no need to worry about running into the ground with this one, at least on the regular flight mode. Coming back, letting off. Cool, man, so that's normal flying. Looks pretty darn good. We have 79% power. This thing looks like it's gonna last a long time, guys. Great just to show you guys that it doesn't have any possibly any obstacle avoidance let me get the sun on me and kind of just try to run into me pretty guaranteed this doesn't but uh, let's just go forward slowly I'll step out of the way if it doesn't stop yeah see that so what it just ran into me so there's no obstacle avoidance at all on this SE edition FYI We'll do sport first before we do all those optional modes. Go into sport mode, 18 meters per second max. Woo, this might be fast. All right, sport mode, I'm gonna go straight that way. Actually, let's just look at it real quick down low before we go out. Now that might drive it into the ground in sport mode. I'm gonna pick it up about eye level and see how it drops without me touching the altitude. Full stick forward. Wow, okay, that's fast. It didn't drop with the wind. Let's go eye level again and see if it gets driven down into the ground uh, against the wind. Full stick forward. Nope, it's still maintaining. Okay, great. That's sport mode for you. And all the while, look at the camera, guys. I'm gonna be showing that in the screen while I'm doing these jerky movements jerking left and right as fast as I can go in sport. Full stick forward, let's see how fast it starts going. Now it's showing V speed. I don't know what's up with this. It's like 4.6, 4 
So something they gotta fix up there in the speeds. I have no idea what's wrong, but it's doing that. Okay, cool. There we go. Still in control. Let's get back over to the park. Now this is in sport. Look how fast that yaw is. Holy smokes. That'll make you dizzy. Wanna come back ASAP? Let's just do a return to home real quick. I just clicked return to home. And I wanna bring this thing back because I don't know where it, where it's at. Okay, it was at the other park down down there. So it's gonna go up to, uh, I think I have it set at 100 feet. Working fantastic, coming back. And can I, yep, I can still move the camera. Can I rotate the yaw? Wow, I can even rotate the yaw, guys, while it's in return to home and get some shots and look around. Let's see if it readjusts its heading before it lands. Yep, it's automatically readjusting its heading. I just tilted the camera down. And if you ever lose it, that's what it'll do. If you turn off the controller or press return to home, that's the speed it comes down at. We're not gonna return to home yet and land because we wanna do some more stuff. So it slowed down right about, I wanna say 25 feet. Turning off return to home, boom. It's gonna get out of it. I kinda like that hardware switch. Let's try a vertical speed in uh, sport mode. Full stick up. Definitely is going faster. And full stick down. Yeah, it's going faster. Letting off. Locks in good. Wow, cool, okay. Well, that's sport mode for you. The only thing is there's no hardware button for sport, sport mode, but that's, you know, that's okay. Um, you do have to go into the settings and we're gonna get out of sport mode just by pressing that. Because, you know, we don't wanna crash while we're doing our follow me functions and stuff. So far, so good, just no obstacle avoidance. Loving it so far. Keep in mind, guys, this is only the uh, third charge on this battery. I did mention I was gonna do 10 charges to get the battery optimal, didn't have enough time. So we'll do that extreme flight time test on a 10 charge battery, but for now, I will put the uh, time up when I finish this review. So quickly, going into some functions here. Let's do a quick little waypoint. Okay, we can do in flight or on map. Let's see what in flight looks like. Setting waypoints in flight, drone will fly along a waypoint route as default speed. If set point of interest, the heading will be locked to POI. Cool, it does POI. Okay. Fly to a target. Okay, so this is where you can fly to target positions. So we'll go to one position. We gotta do this quick, right? And tap plus. Okay, where is plus? There it is, up on the top left. So that's one. Look at all these options. Hover, 10 seconds, record for 10. Now this is like Parrot, uh, an Anafi and the Bebops. Check it out, you have all these options. You can do pictures, videos at each waypoint. You can have it go clockwise, counterclockwise on the bottom. That's just fantastic. And you can adjust your gimbal. Wow. We'll just do a single shot. Add, okay, I just added that waypoint. A shot of the grass, wonderful. <laughs> all right, next waypoint is gonna turn this way. Let's fly over here a bit, letting off. Let's take another shot, so we're gonna press one. Oh, it needs a, a, long, a more of a distance for another waypoint. Okay, how about that target? Will that work? Pressing on one again there, okay, that was far enough. We'll do a recording for 10 seconds, add. And then we'll just come back. We'll go up, come back here. Okay, and this will be, we're pressing on the two. Okay, it's gotta be further, at least 32 feet. Going a little further, keep that in mind. Waypoint three, we'll do a uh, burst shot, add. Okay, when we're done, what do we do? Pressing the arrow here to the right. And we can adjust our flight speed. 26 seconds it's only gonna take to do all that. It's only gonna go 1.3 miles per hour. Let's go up to four. Heading, we're gonna point at the waypoint. Point of interest can be locked only in at free direction. Keep that in mind. And fail safe is just to exit. 
let's go. So that means if the controller loses signal. Okay, so I press continue and it's gonna start at the first waypoint, okay? So you'll be seeing the video and everything it's doing. So I wonder what happens. Okay, it's gonna go to the second waypoint. As it's moving, you see the head turning and it's gonna record for 10 seconds. Now this is interesting because I'm already recording, so we'll see how this, uh, I'll have the stuff pop up on the screen of how it looks and what it does. Arrive at waypoint three and burst. That's cool, it's telling you what to do, what it's gonna do on the phone. So now it's gonna go that way as it's turning its head. And then it looks like when it gets to the waypoint, it completes its yaw turn. Now it's bursting photos. Okay, cool, it's letting you know waypoint mission complete. And it looks like unless you tell it to come back, it's just gonna finish at the last waypoint. So don't forget to do that. Okay, so that was that function and it just completely gets out of that function. We'll see if it took pictures because it looks like it's still recording on my phone. Get back to us here right in front. Go into, let's try smart track. Oh, it says beta on there. Okay guys, so let's try this. Whatever we don't finish now, we'll do a flight test too, okay guys? So don't worry, we'll do more. Let's do lock. So drag a rectangle around the object. Please fly an open area, okay. And drawing a square. Okay, very similar to other drones, go. Flight height too low, let's pick it up. Is it gonna lock on me before I press go and tilt the camera down? No, see that? So something that other manufacturers are able to do, you have to tilt the gimbal yourself until you press go. All right, so we can just track like this. Let's see how good it is at following me in this wind. Is it gonna follow? It's keeping a distance of 11 feet, nope. Yes. Is it coming closer? Wow, it still says it's 10 feet away. Oh, that must be from its home point. But for me, look, it's not following me. So maybe there's no follow right now. I'm not sure as far as like coming towards me or keeping its distance. Let's see if it'll, I can lose it if I run quickly. Getting to the side of the screen. Running pretty fast. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay into the sun and it lost me, see that? So maybe an issue, lock has done, okay. So we found an issue with shooting kind of, I mean, gosh, it's only three o'clock. The sun's not too low, but it still lost me. So I'm gonna go back over by the sun, or have the sun facing me. And it just completely exits all the flight modes. Let's try uh, smart track again. <laughs> I almost said fart track. We'll do a trace. So this should trace sideways. And box again. Go. All right, let's see how it does. Wait a minute, trace is, trace is following me, okay. Yeah, there you go. So trace will follow you guys. I thought it was the lock. Okay, so the lock just stays stationary, but pivots to follow you. So, while it's following me, whoa! That was weird. The wind really influenced it there. And it didn't know what to do. And I can't draw another box, I gotta go all the way back into that mode. Back into trace, okay. Let's go farther away, see if it has an easier time. Farther away and higher, right here. I am seeing that blue tint that everybody's talking about. You know what I'll do? Exit. Come on. Exit, I'm pressing the button. Cancel. Oh, I pressed okay. Wow, really? Can't get out of this mode. Target lost. Looks like it's too far away or something. Go. Wow, so a little bit of issues they gotta work out for follow me guys, go. 
Really? Okay. What I want to know is why I can't exit this when I go there and then I press OK. This is this is kind of funny. I gotta try to run away from it. Wow, okay. We'll go back into the void device. I just went out of it and I'm back in. Okay. So we're finding issues that they need to work on. Leave it to me. So what I was talking about is I want to go into here. I want to go into uh, the video. Oh man, we haven't been taking video this whole time. Have we? We'll stop recording. Yes, we have. We just couldn't adjust the settings while it was recording. Good to know. Um, style, nope. Come on, quick. Uh, settings, video, white balance. We want to do sunny now since it's sunny. Okay, there we go, there's sunny. Recording again. 30% guys, looks like I just got into the orange. Let's hurry the heck up. So smart track needs some work. We did lock, we did profile. No, we didn't do profile. Please land ASAP to avoid damaging. Okay, did you hear that? A little bit of a warning. Let's just try this real quick. Profile, go. And it, what it should do is it should just follow me out of profile. So say I want to jog. Let's go this way. And I want it to follow me like this. Walking, hiking, whatever. Let's try slow walk. Slow walk can get you in the center, but watch when I start running. It does start to get, and it's not moving away from me. Let's see if we walk under it. Slowly walking under it. Bye bye, yeah. Okay, so that's what happens. It finished it, it just goes all the way out. I do want to try the trace and walk under it, okay guys? I'm noticing that blue tinge. So, go. All right, it's recording. Let's walk under it and see if it spins around. Nope, not capable of spinning around. Finding, finding some issues. Trace done. Okay, one more. Man, we're gonna have to do another video. We did trace and profile. I thought trace was supposed to move away from you. Anyway, we'll try just like a trace and we'll try to make it orbit while it's doing this. 1.7 miles per hour um, clockwise. So there we go, spinning. And let's see, I have it maxed out at its fastest speed and it's orbiting me. Woo, 21% power. Oh, you saw how it lost track of me and it just totally stopped. Not able to, this one can't re relock. So no relocking here, keep that in mind. And we're at 20%, so we still got some stuff to do. We're gonna have to do a flight test too. Um, we kind of did the orbit in the track, but there's the orbit mode. You see how that works. Oh, we can exit out of it there. Okay, that time it worked. So we'll do that. We'll do orbit mode. We'll do tap fly. We'll do droney. We'll do spiral. We'll do SAR. We'll do cinematic mode, tripod, course lock, and fixed wing in the second flight test. This was just to like show you basic flying and a couple features. We look at SAR real fast. It's showing coordinates, okay, there you go, see that? And we can zoom, let's just try this out. Zooming all the way into three. Okay, you see that? That's SAR. So that's how the video's looking, I'm recording. So you got a three time zoom, and you can go anywhere in the line, and that's how clear it looks. So we'll see how, the, how that is in the video and everything. So search and rescue, see how you got the coordinates up there? Cool. So let's get out of that, pressing the X. Okay, that time it exited. So let's go back 
And you know what we'll do is a return to home real fast because we only have 15% battery. So pushing to the home and it's gonna come back. Low battery, please land. Okay, let's see if it can do it. We are only at 14%. I'm hoping it comes home. It just went up to its 100 feet. And let's see how close it lands to this H. Okay, good. I was expecting it to possibly land over there because it's only at 15%, but it looks like it did come home, so that's good. This one's supposed to also have an automatic return to home if you're far enough away, like farther than like 50 feet or 100 feet. So here we go, pitch down. Let's see how stable that camera is. And let's see where it's gonna land. Wow, the FPV is getting a little bit glitchy. So that's where I took off and I haven't landed since. It does look like it's correcting itself a little bit. Okay. Low battery. There we Please go. Please charge ASAP. Mm -hmm. Low battery. Please charge or replace. Okay. So it tells you audio on the phone of what to do. And you saw that it did turn off its propellers pretty quickly. Um, as far as our precision, one, two, three feet. That is tolerable, but not as good as precision landing on some of the other um, drones. So the grass, you can see the grass is messing up the gimbal too. See how that's glitching it? Because it's so low. So we'll turn this off ASAP. Did stop recording also when I landed and it disarmed, so you don't have to worry about it still recording. Click, click and hold. Unplug, turn off the drone. Click, click and hold. And that's it. Wow, that was the initial flight test. I didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted to, but at least it was a good basic test. Let's go ahead and shoot over to the chair here and do a pros and cons on this first flight. Okay guys, so first flight. Um, actually, I did just a quick little hover test and sort of a range test at my house in a residential area. I'll have that video up possibly next or after the second um, kind of tutorial flight test review. But uh, I will say that it did pretty good in residential interference. Stay tuned for that one. We're also gonna do range testing in the country, like we're in around no interference with the stock antennas. And I also have these little guys from my uh, Mi 4K drone that will slip right over here, these little parabolic dishes. And I'm expecting to get even more range with this. So this will be also be another range test. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe so you don't miss those. But let's talk about the pros and cons now for the initial X8 flight test. It does really good at flying. I'll give it that. Sensors on the bottom keep it up. It does ramp up the motors when it needs to to prevent itself from hitting the ground. So these are do seem to be working very well. You can see the precision landing was a little bit off. Precise landing, they're calling it. So not as good as some other drones, but for their first foldable small drone like this, uh, that's not bad. Three feet away after all that flying I did and all those modes I was switching in and out of. Kind of a con, they didn't put any obstacle avoidance whatsoever on this one. A little bit deceiving because you have this cool glass front, those glasses here, the shield that looks like there might be sensors behind it, which fooled me in my unboxing. Sorry about that, but there is no obstacle avoidance whatsoever, apparently. We did have great flight time. Now, I think I landed at uh, probably just around 10%. The line was below 14. I will have the total flight time pop up here on the screen so you guys can see that was the third charge of this battery and you'll see just how long I flew for that initial flight test. Again, sorry we didn't get through all those functions, but that's a lot of stuff to test. Um, the functions we did go through, the smart track, it needs a little bit of work. You could see how it was losing me. It doesn't have the ability to retract the object automatically, even if it goes right back in the box. So some other manufacturers have a big advantage on, of it on that. Um, it seemed like it did have the profile pretty good. It does, it does a pretty slow 
follow as well. We'll have to test it a little bit faster. I was running around and it was keeping me in view pretty good, but seems like once it gets anywhere near the sun, now it's three o'clock and the sun isn't perfectly overhead, but it's not down in the horizon either. So that kind of vertical and horizontal speed up on the top of the stream, uh, that was a little weird. Wouldn't show the VS at all when I was in regular flying, but it would show the HS, which to me is horizontal and vertical speed. But as far as the control, that was pretty awesome. It controls really well, really smooth. No worrying about dropping down and hitting things. If you need to make sharp maneuvers, like say you're out at distance flying FPV and you're not really seeing the ground, but you're trying to track an object, you don't really have to worry about it uh, dropping altitude like some other drones. Like remember the Xeno doesn't even have any sensors like this and it, it had a really hard time on sharp turns and it would just drop and crash sometimes so definitely better than the Xeno as far as what I'm seeing now and just a little bit more expensive too. Well I've had the video up guys for you on the drone itself, my hat cam and also on my phone recorded so you can see just how it looks in all those different aspects. I want you guys to go ahead and be the judge of how that 4k looked. It looked a little bit uh, blue tint to me and then I switched it into sunny and so you guys be the judge of that. Might need a little bit of tweaking on the video but as far as now there is a uh, the white balance you can adjust there is the ISO but I didn't see any shutter speed in the settings of the camera the wind did seem to influence it a little bit uh, maybe a little bit more than like DJI so um, DJI does usually have a little more sensors on their drones so you know this one is undercutting the cost but you're getting that incredible flight time and a 4k camera oh yeah it only does 30 frames per second so if you want something that does 60 frames per second in like a quality 4k right now the evo is kind of your only option the evo is a really good drone but you know it's almost twice as much as this one so if you've got maybe four to five hundred dollars to spend you may want to look at this but as far as the fit and finish goes guys now the wind's really coming up they did a really good job it is very quality feeling uh, it's not light and flimsy plastic. It's solid plastic. It's very quiet. That had a good going for it was it's a very quiet drone uh, and it's portable. Look how portable. It's not too heavy. It's pretty light. The controller is a little bit large compared to, you know, like the Mavic and stuff. It's a little bit larger and I would have liked to see like a flippable sport mode, maybe on this side, on the right side, like sport off and on, instead of having to go in the settings and adjusting all that. In the next video, we're going to go through all the rest of those uh, tracking functions, those advanced flight modes. Sorry, we couldn't fit them all in there, but there's just too much to do on one battery. If I had a second battery for this, I would have put it all in one long video. But anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you're interested in the X8, don't forget to check my links. It does help me out on the channel to keep giving these in-depth reviews on these items go ahead and check the links if you're thinking of buying it and buy it through through my link it does help out anyways thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the flight test 2 testing all, all those other functions and also in range tests and really getting some cinematic video on the shoreline and mountains here of maui hawaii thanks for watching see you in the next one